Hello and welcome to a special edition of Larch Mama Marina Community News. I'm Alicia Myro. And I'm Maura Carlin. Tonight we bring to you the candidates running for office in the village of Amerinick. This year, the mayor's seat is up for re-election and one trustee seat needs to be filled. Current Mayor Deborah Chapin will try to retain her seat for a second term and former trustee Bill Trifoletti will run against her on the Republican ticket. Running for the village of Mamaroneck's one trustee seat will be two first-timers, Thomas Murphy for the Democrats and Bill Payonessa for the Republicans. The people here on Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News believe that one of the major responsibilities for journalists is to educate the public about the people that serve the community. So the public can go out and make an educated decision when they go to the voting booths in November. With that said, let's meet the candidates. Well, joining us now is Phil Trifoletti, candidate for mayor for the village of Mamaroneck, running on the Republican, Independent, and Conservative ticket. Phil, I, I hope you can answer a few questions for us. First up is, just tell us a little bit about who you are. Well, thanks for having me here tonight. Um, I've lived in the village of Mamaroneck for 53 years. Um, I went to school here, uh, as did my parents and my children. Um, I have a wife by the name of Judy, who teaches first grade down in the South Bronx, and have two daughters, Jacqueline and Jessica. Um, I've been with IBM for about 34 years now. Uh, I've been in both accounting and in the finance management positions. Uh, I've done a lot of project management where I've had to bring many people together to solve issues. Um, within the village, obviously I was a trustee for almost three years. Uh, got involved in many issues, uh, Washingtonville, got involved with the Mamaroneck Avenue Streetscape, uh, heavily involved in the budget uh, process. Um, and, and was also involved heavily in improvements to the various parks throughout uh, the village, uh, the Jefferson Park, Stanley Avenue, Florence, and uh, a little bit with Harbor Island. Well, it sounds like you've had a lot of involvement with the village. Can you yeah. tell us what you see as the most important issue facing the residents, residents of the village of Mamaroneck today and, and how you'd like to deal with that? Well, I think there's really three issues that have, uh, are, are paramount importance to the village. The first one is taxes, and uh, we need to do everything we possibly can to keep taxes down. Um, we, uh, our tax rate, I feel, this past year was too high. I feel that there were services that were cut out um, that should not have been, uh, like the uh, Bay Constables, the crossing guard down on Marinick Avenue by Spencer Street on Saturdays. Uh, um, we even lost our dog. We used to run after the geese at Harbor Island. We no longer have him employed. The, uh, the dog's name is Sadie. He's not employed anymore. So I feel that the, the uh, the budget needs a really uh, good look for the next year uh, b because I, I think there's a lot of room for improvement there. I also think, and I think most of the people in the village think, that Harbor Island is a key issue, both what's to be done with the harbor um, and with the pollution that's down there. And I think those are two of the key issues. Okay. And you mentioned taxes in your uh, discussion about important issues. How would you plan to keep those taxes down but yet keep the services up? Well, one of the things you have to do is constantly monitor the budget. Um, one of the things I, I propose uh, when I'm elected mayor would be that on a quarterly basis I would have the village manager present to the village how we're doing with the budget. Are the revenues coming in properly the way we expected them to? Are we spending on the ratio we're supposed to be spending on? Are we exposed? I think all the village residents on a quarterly basis need to understand what's going on in the village as far as the budget goes. Uh, this past year, we had an initial budget come out at 10.6 percent, which shocked everyone in the village. Uh, we shouldn't get to a point where uh, a month before people start looking at the budget, everybody gets shocked to say, hey, what's this big increase all about? I think you have to monitor that very, very closely, and you have to watch what you're spending on and plan the spending, not only in the current year, but in the out years. If you have big capital expenditures that you have to make, you've got to plan them and plan them so that they don't impact the tax rate because the people in this village pay heavy tax, taxes, not only to the village, but also in school taxes. And you've got to try to, to, to keep the expenses down. Yet, you have to try and increase services and, and, and maintain the level of services we currently have. Okay. Thank you for being so honest. Yep. Now, I want to ask you, in the wake of the bombing of the World Trade Center, which has affected us all, and yeah. uh, as well as the Pentagon, how, will this, how do you see that affecting the residents of the village of Mamaroneck? Well, uh, obviously the tragedy is indescribable. This is, the words can't describe what happened down here last week, and I think we've all changed. And I think the village residents, uh, I talk about myself. <laughs> I look at my family now uh, differently. I mean, every, every time I leave the house, I, I say to myself, you know, I hope I come back, hope everyone is safe. Um, I, 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 
you just want to make sure that you're doing the right things to everyone, uh, for everyone, and, and, that, and, and that you show your love for everyone. And I think in the village, uh, as, as a mayor, you have to uh, make sure that you respect everyone, that you listen to everyone, and, and that when, and when you deal with people, you, you must show them the respect. You must listen to your opinions and make decisions based on that. So I would hope that with the bombing that occurred down in the village, that the board or the mayor, whoever they may be in the future, would, would not take things for granted, would listen to the people and really be, be warm and, and outgoing and, and respect everyone. Thank you. Thank you for that heartfelt response. And in closing, I just want to ask you, why should residents vote for you? You touched on your work experience, but... Well, I, I, I think I there are five things that are key for anyone being a mayor or a trustee. Uh, one of them is people skills and respect for people. One of them is communicating clearly and precisely. I think you need business skills to look at problems and to understand what they're about. You have to have good decision-making skills. And you have to also be able to look at the decisions you're making now for the village and for the residents and see how it's going to impact the residents in future years. With the jobs that I've had in IBM, with what I did as a trustee, I think I show that I have all of those skills. And I think with those skills, I'd, I'd make a, a very good mayor and would really benefit the village and, and, and the residents in the village. Well, thank you for answering our questions, and we wish you the best of luck in the election. It was a pleasure being here. Thanks for having me. We're jo I'm joined now by Bill Panessa, the Republican candidate for trustee. And first, I want to apologize for Alicia mispronouncing your name. It is Bill Panessa. Yes, it is. Um, you pronounce it perfectly. Thank you. Um, you're running for trustee on the Republican ticket in the village of Mamaroneck. That's correct. Can you tell us a little bit about who you are? Well, I'm a 51-year-old resident of Mamaroneck. I've lived in uh, both the village and Rhineck. I presently reside at 205 Grant Terrace. That's in Harbor Heights. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a graduate of Iona Prep, uh, four years of college, got a uh, degree in accounting and finance. I'm presently employed by Garth Kitchens. I do kitchen and bath remodeling. I uh, can do something small to something <laughs> elaborate, if you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, have you held any positions in the village uh, of Mamaroneck? Uh, not so much in the village, but as a village representative in the uh, town of Mamaroneck Recreation, I have to get that correct, uh, we are taxpayers to the town and I help uh, coordinate the Homics Field, the ice rink and all the facilities that the Town of Mamaroneck Recreation Commission is in charge of. The pool, we've done a few uh, improvements there as well as the Homics Field, so I've had some experience in the last seven years. Okay. What do you think is the most important issue facing the residents of the village of Mamaroneck today and how do we deal with it? Well, that's a good question. I think there's more than one, but obviously on everyone's list it's taxes. Uh, and really it's tough to say you're going to be able to reduce them, but what you want to do is give someone a good value for the taxes they pay. Uh, not overspend, obviously you can't underspend. Uh, you want a good dollar value, and I think with good management, which is part of my skills, which I think I'll bring to being a trustee, I'll be able to help organize things better and get people to do a day's work and get out of them. Uh, well, what how do expected. you think that you keep taxes down and services up? Well, it's not so much keeping taxes down. Things certainly go up with inflation. Uh, cost of living goes up. Everybody faces that. But you want to be able to maintain the services and get quality for that. You don't need to spend more money to get more. You need to spend better money to get better results. Give the people the right support. Help, for instance, uh, Department of Public Works where they need some attention or the fire department when they need help. Uh, basically have the community work as a whole to save money where we can, spend it where we have to, but not just to spend it and use the term willy-nilly and then suffer the uh, consequences like Streetscape right now is running probably 300000 or better over budget. Things like that do happen in business, but there has to be a cause and effect. Certain things you should know up front to try to prevent that. In the wake of the uh, bombing of the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, um, how will this affect the residents of the village of Mamaroneck? Well, I think we've all become more sensitive and hopefully we become more caring about each other, uh, our families, our friends. It's affected a lot of people. Um, personally, I just have to say that I think you could talk to people a little differently. I think people have been acting differently. I think we're all going to care a little bit more about what happens to you, to me, to the community, and hopefully that'll you know, transcend down to how do we make Harbor Island a better place for everyone? How do we help the village work out its problems with the streetscape and other things like that. Taxes for condos 
and uh, co-ops, how do we keep that in line so that people want to move to the village of Mamaroneck, spend money in the village of Mamaroneck, have the merchants get, well, just basically more people down the village, get better parking and things like that. Those are some of the issues I gather that yes, you think are also, important. Yes, that's right. Okay. Well, why don't you tell us why you think the residents of, of the village of Mamaroneck mm -hmm. should vote for you this election? Well, I, th I think I bring something of a new face, number one, although I've been in the village for 51 years, as I said. I'm really more of an independent person. I can talk, uh, let's say, to the parties of choice, whether it be Democratic or Republican, independent or conservative. I like listening to everyone's point of view before I finally make a decision. I really have a bipartisan feel. I don't ask or introduce myself as Bill Panessa, the Republican trustee, or, you know, trying to be elected that way. I just needed to get on a platform, and I felt having the experience in my position at work where I helped to coordinate and bring to fruition someone's dreams of a beautiful kitchen or an addition or something. Well, that really can be magnified down to how can you run government more efficiently? How can you get people to do the job they're paid to do? Enjoy doing it, which is another thing, and be civil with them. Help them, listen to them, and help coordinate. People have wants and needs. If you bring people together, all of a sudden you find that there's a commonality, not just to listen to one side or the other. And unfortunately, I think right now we're just getting one side of the coin, not both. I like to say that everybody will be heard, not just the Republicans, not just the Democrats, but people in the village of Mamaroneck. And I think I have really no baggage. I'm not attached to anyone. So that basically no one can say, well, he's going to side with them or he's going to side with them. I really have uh, no opinion, so to speak, one way or the other, except my own. And I will listen to everyone else's before I make a final decision. Okay. And on that note, we want to thank you for coming in. Wish you luck in the election. All right. Thank, thank you. you. That's nice Bill Panessa. Here. Very good. Well, I'm joined by Mamaroneck Village's incumbent candidate for mayor on the Democratic ticket, Deborah Chapin. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to start out with uh, just sharing with us a little bit about who you are. Uh, I'm Debbie Chapin, and I have been the mayor of the village of Mamaroneck since November of 1999. I am a lifelong resident of the area. I grew up in the town of Mamaroneck, graduated from Mamaroneck High School in 1971, uh, married a local boy. We have three very local children. Uh, and I ha we moved back to the community in 1983 and to Mamaroneck Village in 1986. I've been involved in a variety of community uh, organizations. I did most of my volunteer work in connection with the schools. I was on the PT Council, the PTA. Uh, I was president of a neighborhood association. And in 1999, I ran for mayor and won. And so for the past two years, I have been the mayor of the village of Mamaroneck. Well, considering your long-standing relationship with the village, can you tell me what you feel the most important issue is facing the residents of the village of Mamaroneck today, and how do we deal with it? I think the most important issue facing the, the residents of the village of Mamaroneck is the changing world around us and, and how we fit into those changes and how we are going to adapt to those changes and plan for the future. And I think those are economic considerations, so, social considerations. We have changing demographics. We have changing economics. We have a changing environment. And I think the big issue uh, is how we plan for the future appropriately so that Mamaroneck remains a place that is a very livable, affordable community for all kinds of people. Okay, on that note of making it livable and affordable, how will we keep taxes down but services up? You know, uh, like, like so many other things, that would have been an easier question a little over a week ago. Um, I think the way you keep taxes down is by good sound management and by making tough choices and by being willing to question history and underlying assumptions. You know, we made 109 line item cuts in the budget. I think it's 109 line item cuts in the budget this year in order to bring the budget, uh, the tax increase to a reasonable level. The village manager prepared a budget with an 11 percent tax increase. The board felt that it was absolutely unacceptable. And so we made some assumptions in, in, in the revenue we generate, but we also sat down and made some very, very tough choices about how you, uh, we could cut services and still provide vital, essential services to, to the people. Not all of those choices that we made were particularly popular, but I think if you're not willing to t make those tough choices and ask the tough questions, it's going to be very, very difficult, particularly in light of the events of last week, which I think are going to have a profound economic uh, impact on our community. That's, that's actually one of my questions in light of what's happened in the world most recently, and, and you said things have changed in the last week or so. How will the bombing of the World Trade Center and Pentagon affect 
the residents of the village of Mamaroneck? Um, well, let, let me start by saying that I think every resident in the village of Mamaroneck has been profoundly affected in, in the past nine days. Um, you know, the World Trade Centers, I know people who watched the Trade Center collapse from, from their own homes in Mamaroneck. Uh, I know lots of people who escaped from the buildings. I know people who saw horrors that n are unimaginable. Um, and I think clearly uh, the feeling of helplessness that so many of us felt, although I will tell you the people in the village of Mamaroneck reacted magnificently. Uh, Fifteen of our police officers were dispatched to New York City within hours. Uh, many, many of our volunteer firemen served in the Bronx, backing up fire department personnel who were on the scene. Uh, others manned our own firehouses 24 hours a day uh, in order to assure that we had coverage in the village. Our EMS uh, workers, volunteers, went down to ground zero and actually transported survivors. When the fire department had a uh, drive for supplies, hundreds, thousands of Mamaroneck residents uh, and merchants contributed to it. I mean, Mamaroneck responded as wonderfully as many other communities did. And, and I think we all felt a profound sense of loss and helplessness. Uh, so clearly, I think there are psychological problems that, frankly, every one of us uh, will, will feel, particularly uh, in, in the suburbs. Um, but I think there are also going to be an economic, there's clearly going to be an economic impact. We have seen what is happening with the stock market. That's going to affect uh, the New York State Pension Fund, for example. And the, w the fortunes of the New York State Pension Fund, to some extent, affect our budget. I think we're going to see lots of real estate values are going to be affected. People's investments are going to be affected. There will clearly be an economic impact, which we better be aware of and plan for. Not th certainly things in the short term, but as well as the long term. In just closing, I'd, I'd like you to share with us why should residents vote for you? <laughs> uh, I, think, uh, I think I've done a good job. Uh, it has not been an easy two years. I think in many ways I have worked with the people of this village to change the way business was done in the village government. We have opened up government, and I say we because I certainly have not done it alone. I've done it with the trustees uh, who I serve with as well as with hundreds and hundreds, thousands of people from this community. Uh, I think we've opened up government. We have allowed people to come and sit and and talk to the village board in, in a completely open dialogue, sometimes agreeing, sometimes disagreeing. Uh, the process sometimes has been uh, perhaps not as pretty as some of us would like it. There's an old saying, you should never watch the making of sausage or legislation. <laughs> uh, and I learned that when I worked on Capitol Hill. And I have seen that it is true on this lowest level of government. I mean, we really are as close to the people as any level of government can be. Uh, but it is where people get up, neighbors get up, and voice different opinions. And, and they do so in an open environment where they know that they will be listened to and that the board will make a decision that's best for everyone in the community, balancing everything. So I think people should vote for me because I think I've done a good job, and I think I've helped to start a course for this village that is worth following for at least two more years. Well, thank you for being so honest and sharing with us this evening. Good luck to you, thank you. on Election Day. Thank you. I'm joined now by Thomas Murphy, who is running as the Democratic candidate for trustee of the village of Mamaroneck. Um, welcome, Tom. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, I know that you are now serving as trustee, having been, been appointed by Mayor Chapin. But why don't you tell us all a little bit about yourself? Okay. Uh, I grew up in New York City. Um, eight, when I was 18, I met my wife, who grew up in Mamaroneck. And I started coming up to Mamaroneck uh, to see her. And then uh, we got married. And we moved here in January of 90. And uh, we had an apartment on Post Road. Then we had another apartment on Stanley Avenue. And we bought a house on Prospect Avenue. And then we bought uh, the house my wife grew up in on Prospect oh. Avenue. Uh, I've, I've really enjoyed living up here. I've coached basketball in the uh, Largemont Mamaroneck Basketball Association. Uh, you know, I've, I've become active in uh, St. Thomas Church. Uh, and I'm on their building committee. And you know, and, and I, I, the mayor and uh, Guy Zariga asked me to be on the recreation committee in January of 2001, and uh, I was happy to do it, and I really enjoyed that. And 
subsequently when the position came up for uh, the village board, the mayor asked me and you know, I was happy to try and serve. And how have you felt about your time serving? It's been just a couple of months at this point. Right, I think I got appointed January 23rd. It, it's, it's been an, an extremely uh, exciting and interesting experience. Uh, you know, I've, I've dealt with issues that uh, are very complex, but you know, it, when I was, you know, you're able to also deal with people and to, uh, you know, try and, you know, not try and just help people uh, get through the process of government and deal with government and, you know, listen to people's concerns and try and act upon those concerns where you can. Yeah. Yeah. What is your career or day job? My day job, I'm an elevator mechanic. Uh, I'm an elevator mechanic in New York City. I take the train into the city every day. Okay. Well, what do you think, having become a Mamaroneck resident, what do you think is the most important issue facing the village of Mamaroneck today and how do we deal with it? I think it would be hard to uh, narrow it down to one issue. You know, there, there are a lot of uh, things that need to be, you know, that, that have any place there's always ongoing things, but you know, Harbor Island Park and the pollution at the beach is a major issue. Uh, How do you think we should deal with that? Yeah, you know, Harbor Island Park, I'd like to see some sort of plan, you know, an overall plan that, you know, that is community-based, that we, you know, information that we get from a wide range of people in the community of what people would like to see down in Harbor Island Park. And then maybe prioritize a list and do things one after the other, like not move on to priority two until you finish priority one. So people can actually see progress. So you're talking about the development of a Harbor Island spray ground or some kind of recreational facility? No, is well, that... whatever is included in, in, in that list. Uh, you know, whatever it is, if it's a, a spray ground or if it's, you know, just something as simple as removing the old circuit training equipment. You know, that would be like something that you could do really quickly that, you know, nobody's using right now and it's kind of in the way. But, you know, just a, a list of things that are prioritized and you can just go through them one at a time. And don't go to number two until you finish number one. Okay, so to sort of handle things in an order and make sure right, it's completed. Right, and so people can see progress. How do you think that um, the village of Mamaroneck will be able to keep taxes down while keeping services up? Well, that's always a hard thing to do. You know, uh, there are a lot of, you know, there are a lot of tough choices that have to be made when you're dealing with taxes. You know, uh, one's per, one, you know, one person looks at a program and it seems like a waste of money, and to another person, it's the most important thing in the world. And it, you know, what you have to concentrate on is keeping the basic services. You know, your your, your garbage gets picked up, your police are there when we need our police, and you know, a fire department is there when we need our fire department. And you know, then you you see what you have left over, and you work out from there. But you know, it, it's it's difficult, and uh, there are intrinsic problems in any budget, and you know there there are things that are coming up, you know, uh, in terms of bonds being due and stuff like that. They're just it's going to make it difficult. But you know, it, it's a it's a situation where you know you need serious people who are going to make tough choices, and you know you, you you're never going to please everybody, and the whole you know hopefully the whole process is to uh, you know make us all safe and happy and provide, you know, the services that we've come to expect and enjoy. Well, speaking of safe and happy, given the recent events oh. uh, with the bombing of the World Trade Centers and the, you know, and the Pentagon, how do you see this affecting the village of Mamaroneck or the residents here? Yeah. Well, you know, it, it affects the whole nation, you know, and uh, it, it, it's a traumatic event that I think, we'll, you know, we haven't even begun to grasp yet. Uh, you know, just, just uh, an aside, I was, I was with a bunch of kids the other day, and they were playing, and I was going to get my kids to take them home, and a plane flew over. And I could see like three or four of the kids just staring up at the plane, which they never would have done before. Right. And you know, it's just that kind of thing that creeps into your psyche, and into the psyche of our children, and it's, 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 uh, it's a terrible thing. But you know, it, it's, it's something that we will get through, and you know, there's something that, I mean, I was in New York when it happened. Thank God I wasn't close, but I was in the city, and it was, it was scary, but it, people were humane, and people were civil, and people were helping each other, and it made me proud to be a New Yorker, and it made me proud to be an American, just to watch it. You know, people were going out of their way to be more courteous, people going out of their way to be more helpful, and you know, you, you could see the people that had been down there, because they were covered mm -hmm. in uh, dust and stuff, and you know, people were very... Uh, they volunteered, and they were very. And all volunteers from this village were exemplary. You know, the, the firemen going down there, and just 
the outpouring of, uh, you know, from, from the little kids in school to the shop uh, keepers, everybody's been great. Well, it's a community that has pulled together. It has, yeah. Why should residents vote for you for trustee of the village of Marinick? Well, I'd like to think that I bring something to the board that is uh, a little different. You know, I, I come from a working class background. You know, I'm, I'm a blue collar worker now. Uh, you know, I commute into the city. So, you know, those are different a aspects of the village that uh, I represent. But also because I, I, I truly love this place. And, you know, I grew up in the city and, uh, you know, I, I loved, you know, living where I lived. But, you know, when it came time to have a family, this is where I wanted to be. And I've been the most happiest here uh, since I moved here. And I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm willing to do the work it takes to be a trustee. And I'm willing to listen to all segments of the community and to take the opinions of all segments of the community in before I make a decision. And, you know, to, to, to listen to everybody and to try and make the decision that benefits the most people. Okay. That's it, really. Okay. And, uh, but I just hope people just come out and vote, because you know, in light of what's happened, you know, the, our the privilege of voting is something that we take for granted. And uh, in light of what's been happening, I think we shouldn't take any of our freedoms for granted. And uh, I hope everybody comes out to vote. Well, I thank you for that thought, and we really thank you for coming in. Um, we wish you luck on thank election you. day. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that's it for this week's edition of Large Mama Marinick Community News. We would like to thank all of the candidates for taking the time from their busy schedules to come and talk with us. If you want to see this news show again, you can. It's on every weekday night at 7 p.m. We record one show each week and it's replayed on this channel, LMC TV Channel 71. Or if you want to request to see it, you can call LMC TV after 4 in the afternoon during the week at 698-6808 and ask to see the new show. They will try to put it on at a time that's convenient for you to watch. And this reminder, this news program is an all-volunteer effort, and we could use a few more volunteers either behind the scenes or as a reporter, or maybe you'd like to shoot video. Whatever the case, we need you. In short, if you want to volunteer to help us put this program on, we have something for you to do. Stop by some Thursday night in the LMC TV studios and see how we do what we do. The LMC TV studios are in the Mamaroneck High School, the Palmer Avenue side, just up the stairs from the landmark Walters hot dog stand. We get things started around 7 p.m. and we'd love to see you. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions or some video of an event that you would like us to put on this news show, bring it to the studio or write to us at Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News in care of LMC TV, 1 Library Lane, Mamaroneck, New York, 10543. Thanks again for watching Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News. I'm Maura Carlin. And I'm Melissa Myro. And now we hope you'll join us for our show next week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good night. to know when CVS will be moving in. Washingtonville receives a grant to help seniors. The Caprice Advisor Program is in full swing at Mamaroneck High School. The Larchmont Library celebrates an anniversary. And there is a new book on the history of Larchmont made just for kids. Those stories and more all right here on this edition of Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News. Welcome to the Larch Mamaroneck Community News Show for the second week of October 2001. I'm Christina Bolger. And I'm Alicia Myro. Our top story, the terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center is something we will never forget.
The last couple of weeks have been a very emotional time. It is also a time during which people with a darker complexion are viewed with suspicion, sometimes harassed or assaulted. It is no surprise that this can also happen in our area. Rumor had it in Mamaroneck on September 11th that a group of dark-skinned men who were allegedly hanging out at the Amico station on the East Boston Post Road in Mamaroneck were cheering and laughing when they heard the news of the collapse of the Twin Towers. According to a police report that night, a sport utility vehicle pulled up at the station. The driver, according to records, made profane comments and threatened to destroy the property by blowing it up. Then the man drove away. None of the attendants nor the owners are of Middle Eastern descent. We are happy to report that nothing has happened to the station and no other incidents have been reported in Mamaroneck. And that's the way it should be. After all, Mamaroneck is the friendly village. Last Monday, Larchmont residents got an opportunity to discuss plans for the Old Grand Union store on Chatsworth Avenue. Representatives from CVS Corp, a national pharmacy chain who obtained the lease on the property after Grand Union filed bankruptcy, were there. The purpose of the meeting was to have CVS answer questions and discuss plans and alternatives with the board, residents, and local business owners who will be affected by their presence. Louie and the board have been reluctant to get involved in plans for the site since CVS legally obtained the site and can operate its business the way it chooses. The building and the business are in a business zone, but 50% of the parking lot space is owned by the village. Some residents desire a grocery store and were hard hit when Grand Union closed, especially senior citizens. In fact, last spring, a community action group called Larchmont United for Commercial Harmony was created to help lobby businesses to come to Larchmont and fill the many vacancies popping up in the village. The group also gathered more than 600 signatures from residents who want a grocery store. The final plans for the space are yet to be decided, but at least Larchmont residents did get an opportunity to have their voices heard on October 1st. We will keep you apprised of any news regarding the location. The Caprice Advisor Program at Mamaroneck High School has begun. For more, here's Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News Reporter, Glenna Gray. The Caprice Advisory Program is alive and well at the high school. This program is designed to assist freshmen get better acquainted with the high school and the expanded educational demands on them. Guidance counselors supervise the program. However, the advisors are seniors. The advisors act as mediators for the lower classmen. Approximately 150 juniors apply for the position of advisor, but only 30 or 40 may be chosen. The applicants for the advisory position are selected by a panel of faculty members who rate them on their essays, interviews, leadership abilities, and interpersonal skills. The applicants go through a series of workshops which develop their discussion skills. Each senior advisor leads a weekly class with approximately 15 freshmen. The new student has an opportunity to discuss their concerns and they learn to adjust to the new environment. This program was created by the late Lillian Caprice, who was an assistant principal with a heart, who believed in aiding students on the personal level. For Larchmont Memorial Community News, I'm Glenna Gray. In the wake of the World Trade Center tragedy, a lot of people have been sending in donations to help the families who have lost loved ones. Unfortunately, there are some in our society who will try to take advantage of this situation for their own profit. That's where the Village of Mamaroneck Police Department comes in. Any residents in the village wishing to make a donation can do so through the Village of Mamaroneck Police Department and be assured their donations will be set through to those who need it. In addition, the Village of Mamaroneck Police and Fire Departments have planned a benefit basketball game planned for October 26th at, the, at 7 p.m. For more details on this event, we will hear from those planning the charity event. My name is Jim Gaffney. I'm a sergeant with the Village of Mamaroneck Police Department. I'm talking to you on behalf of the Village of Mamaroneck Fire and Police Departments. Our two departments have joined together as a result of the World Trade Center tragedy. We know that many organizations and many 
communities have stepped forward to take some sort of action to try and help those who have been uh, found to be uh, uh, killed and among the missing. What our departments have decided to do is to come back with our benefit basketball game. This is something we did many years ago when there was a need, when somebody was sick or ill, and there has never been a greater need than what has just happened as of September 11th. So with that in mind, we have started a fundraiser where you can send a check to the Police Fire Benefit Fund, Post Office Box 774, Mamaronek, New York, 10543. And what we are doing is we will be collecting funds from all the residents who care to make a donation from the village. And on October 26th at 7 o'clock, we will be playing a benefit basketball game. That night, that will be the close of the fundraising drive. And anybody who wishes to attend that game, we will accept donations at, at the door and then all proceeds along with any other checks or money orders that we may have received will be forwarded to New York City. It will be forwarded to the Twin Towers Fund. Once again, that's the Police and Fire Benefit Fund, P.O. Box 774, Mamaronek, New York, 10543. And the game will be played at Mamaronek High School, the Palmer Avenue Gym, at 7 p.m. Thank you again. There is a celebration of sorts going on at the Larchmont Library, and here with the details is Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News reporter, Maura Carlin. 75 years old and still growing, that's the Larchmont Public Library. As the library celebrates its birthday this November, its beginnings remind us of our community's rich history, and we see how the library has become a community itself. Three quarters of a century ago, the Larchmont Library opened its doors on land that was donated by Edward Albee, the grandfather of the famous playwright. And the site, where it still stands today, was the location of Samuel Palmer's first farmhouse, built in 1701. For those of us who don't remember, Palmer was the first supervisor of the town of Amaranek. Of course, over the years, the building has changed. It's grown with several additions to accommodate the growing population of people and books and the newest technology, computers. The increase in the available resources is astounding. For example, in 1926, the library had about 6,000 books. It now owns over 90,000. And with participation in the Westchester Library System, library patrons have access to even more books housed in other Westchester libraries. In 1926, the library had 45 periodicals, and it now has 180 print periodical titles, plus 3,100 electronic titles, not to mention the audio and video resources that didn't exist in 1926. But one of the biggest changes pointed to by library officials is that the library itself no longer just serves the community, but is a community, a community center. And last year alone, the library ran nearly 500 programs, including book discussion groups, talks by authors, performances, children's story times, and craft projects, just to name a few. And capping off this year's recognition of 75 years of service will be another program, a lecture by noted historian and author Arthur Schlesinger, to be held Sunday, October 14th at 3 p.m. in the St. Augustine's Auditorium. We hope to see you there, and happy 75th to the Larchmont Public Library. For Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News, I'm Maura Carlin. Julie Gilligan has written a book on the history of Larchmont just for kids. Here with more is Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News reporter, Suzanne Rothberg. A new history book about the village of Larchmont for children is out and ready for anyone interested in learning about the village's involvement. The 10-page publication written by Julie Gilligan, a 45-year resident of Larchmont, describes in detail about the village's unique historic landmarks. In her book, she includes clip art and photographs of the village to accompany the text. She is an active member of the Larchmont and Mamaroneck Local Summit and has been involved with Larchmont and Mamaroneck Cable Television. She has a doctorate in communications from Pacific Western University in Los Angeles and currently freelances for several publications. Gilgan got the idea after completing her own family history and by spending countless hours sifting through the information at the Larchmont Historical Society. 
with the help from village historian Judith Doolin Spikes and Mamaroneck town historian Paula B. Lipset, Gilligan compiled noteworthy facts about the Sliding Rock in Manor Park, the Manor House on Elm Avenue, and many other buildings and attractions in that area. The first hundred copies of the book were released from the publisher shortly after the terrorist attacks on September 11th. As Gilligan describes her work in the book, there has never been a history book for kids. If you look around, currently books are for adults, she said. If kids are going to learn in the fourth grade, they're not going to look at these books. Gilgan hopes teachers will use the book as a learning tool to educate their students about one of the most historic towns in Westchester, Larchmont. The book currently sells for $10. I'm Suzanne Rothberg reporting from Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News. And we here at, on Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News would like to welcome Suzanne to the news show. For more information on how you can join the news program, stay tuned to the end of the show for more details. Washingtonville Housing Alliance recently received a $50,000 grant. For more details, we go to Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News reporter Amy Schachtel. The New York State Department of Housing and Community Renewal has given Washingtonville a $50,000 grant so they can help seniors who need emergency repairs to their homes and property. The Restore Home Improvement Program was designed to help people prevent potentially dangerous situations in their homes. Plumbing problems, roof leaks, heat or electrical malfunctions are some of the tasks that this grant will help and residents must be low-income homeowners who are 60 years or older. For more information about the Restore Home Improvement Program, you can call the Washingtonville Housing Alliance at 698-4299. Again, the number is 698-4299. Call and see if they can help you. For Larchmont Mamarna Community News, I'm Amy Schachtel. And that's it for this week's edition of Larchmont Mamarna Community News. If you want to see this new show again, you can. It's on every weekday night at 7 p.m. We record one show each week, and it's replayed on this channel, LMC TV, channel 71. Or if you want to request to see it, you can call LMC TV after 4 in the afternoon during the week at 698-6808 and ask to see the new show. They will try to put it on at a time that's convenient for you to watch. And this reminder, the news program is an all-volunteer effort, and we could use a few more volunteers, either behind the scenes or as a reporter, or maybe you'd like to shoot video. Whatever the case, we need you. In short, if you want to volunteer to help us put this program on, we have something for you to do. Stop by some Thursday night in the LMC TV studios and see how we do what we do. The LMC TV studios are in the Mamaroneck High School, the Palmer Avenue side, just up the stairs across from the landmark Walters hot dog stand. We get things started around 7 p.m. and we would love to see you. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions or some video of an event that you would like us to put on this new show, bring it to the studio or write to us at Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News in care of LMC TV, 1 Library Lane, Mamaroneck, New York, 10543. Thanks again for watching Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News. I'm Christina Bolger. And I'm Alicia Myro. We'll see you next week. That was wonderful. on teen smoking is out. The county executive Andy Spanner releases his preliminary capital budget for the county. The new sport complex for Harbor Island gets the green light. A large one firefighter is hurt in a fire and we'll have the report. And the source of pollution at Harbor Island is still a mystery. Those stories and more all here on this edition of Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News.
welcome to the Large Point Romana Community News Show for the fourth week of October 2001. I'm Sven Ulmer. And I'm Maura Carlin. Our top story? Larchmont police want more money and they're taking their demand to the people. The police union has written to local residents and staged a rally at Village Hall. The police officer's contract expired June 1 and the ongoing negotiations focus on pay. Union officials claim Larchmont police are paid less than police in the neighboring town and village of Mamaroneck. A fifth-year top-grade patrolman makes just under $63,000 a year in Larchmont compared to just over $64,000 in the town of Mamaroneck and almost $65,500 in Mamaroneck Village. Union officials believe that the impact of an increase on Larchmont police salaries would be softened by the fact that its police force is about half the size of that in the town. Larchmont Mayor Cheryl Louie says the Larchmont police salaries rank right in the middle of those in Westchester County and that the police have received better raises than other village personnel in past contract negotiations. The amount currently being offered by the village in negotiations is a $70,000, $641 salary for a four-year officer by the end of the contract term. The issue of who should build and operate the planned indoor tennis and multi-sports center at Harbor Island Park attracted a lot of attention from residents and has kept lawyers busy. In the ongoing battle about tennis at Harbor Island, a state Supreme Court justice had ruled earlier this year that Harborview Racquet Club, the operator of the former Harbor Island tennis bubbles since 1978, could continue with a lawsuit against Sportheim, a Long Island company that Mamanic Village selected to build the $1.9 million indoor tennis and multi-sport center in the park. In a libel lawsuit, Harborview Racquet Club asked for $60 million. The lawsuit alleges that a sport time representative wrote letters that were signed by local residents to damage the reputation of Harborview Racquet Club and its president. In this dispute about who will operate the tennis bubbles in Harbor Island Park, the village was defeated in court earlier this year when the court ruled that the village had violated Harborview's right of first refusal when it selected sport time over, over Harborview to build the new facility. The appellate division of the Supreme Court has now removed a temporary ban on the construction of the facility. The court said that banning construction would impose an unreasonable restraint on the ability to transfer ownership of public parkland. Mayor Shapen told the Journal News that the village had not decided whether it would allow sport time to go ahead with the construction. She mentioned the fact that four of the five trustees on the village board were not on the board when the contract was approved initially. Chapin was quoted in the Journal News saying, we're going to look at all our options. We are clearly going to do so in the context of long range, pl range planning for Harbor Island Park, end of quote. More. The town of Mamaroneck will not pursue a reassessment of Mamaroneck's commercial and residential properties, at least not now. The town plans to wait and see if other communities or the county do it together. Town Administrator Steve Altieri expressed concern about Mamaroneck doing a reval alone and would encourage a group approach, either countywide or with a group large enough to dilute possible inequity. You may recall that two years ago, the town council appointed a committee to look into the need for a revaluation of town properties and how it would affect taxpayers. Well, the last valuation was in 1968, and the result has been a wide fluctuation in assessed and actual values. The committee recommended a full revaluation and that the town take advantage of its homestead option that allows officials to charge a higher tax rate to commercial owners than residential. Earlier this year, a second committee was appointed to consider the impact a reval would have on cooperative and condominium owners since they could be termed commercial owners. In a revaluation, a single family home's value would be based on its market value, while the value of co-ops and condos would be based on their rental values. There also could be distinctions among condos. Those built as condominiums would have higher tax increases than those later converted into condos since they'd be treated as multifamily homes. With all of this potential for disparity, one member of the Town Evaluation Committee and a condo owner, Irving Scharf, submitted a minority report seeking a more fair procedure for revaluation. And for now, revaluation will wait. By the way, Mr. Altieri points out revaluation is intended to bring equity to the system. It does not increase revenue. 
It's budget time is here again. Uh, Westchester County Executive Andrew Spano sent the capital budget for the next financial year to the county legislator last, legislators last week. They have until the end of December to review the proposal. Among the projects are $23.7 million for new buses for the B-Line bus system, $10 million to protect open space and build new parks, $5.3 million to rebuild six miles of Westchester Avenue and White Plains and Harrison, $4 million to construct an aircraft de-icing hangar at Westchester County Airport, $3.2 million for county golf courses, the sum of $150,000 is allocated for building a memorial to county residents killed in the terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center. More news on the Mamaroneck Village water pollution problem. New tests indicate that the high bacteria levels that kept Harbor Island Beach closed for its second straight summer originate from animal waste and not sanitary human waste as previously believed. Only one of 36 samples taken at six sites in the Sheldrake and Mamaroneck rivers suggest human pollution sources. Village managers said that this was a surprising turn of events and requires a different approach than if the source was sewage. But before jumping to conclusions or solutions, further testing will be done. And the village's consulting engineer, Dolph Rotfeld, plans to ask the county health department to test the surrounding streams, such as the Hutchinson River and Blind Brook, to see if they show similar results as Mamaroneck. And if they do, he says, it might just be that Mamaroneck Harbor doesn't get enough flushing in and out. And the village also plans to seek advice from other communities that have had similar problems. Sven? A Larchmont firefighter was hurt this past week. For more, here's Larchmont Mamaroneck community news, community news reporter Amy Schachtel. A Larchmont policeman and firefighter were injured during a fire at 11 Kilmer Road this past week. The fire broke out around 8.50 p.m. and was probably started in a second floor ceiling and quickly spread into the home's attic. Larchmont police were able to get two residents out of the burning building, which took about 30 minutes to put out. This according to Larchmont Fire Chief Brian Payne. Chief Payne was also quoted in the Journal News saying he thought the cause of the fire was electrical and estimated the damage to the home at around $75,000. The Larchmont police officer and firefighter were taken to the Sound Shore Medical Center of Westchester in New Rochelle with minor injuries treated and released. For Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News, I'm Amy Schachtel. A new report on teen smoking has just been released. Here with the details is Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News reporter Glenna Gray. The number of teen smokers has dropped somewhat dramatically in the last two years. Over 3,000 teenagers per day began smoking in 1997. In 1998 and 1999, the figure dropped to 2,145 per day. The National Household Survey on Drug Abuse data showed the lower figure of 2,145 held for the year 2000. There are multiple reasons for this drop. One, the price of cigarettes has increased from $1.85 in 1997 to $2.92 in 1999. Two, anti-smoking ad campaigns have increased. Three. An increase in bad press for cigarette makers who have faced multiple lawsuits. Four, there are more smoke free smoke zones in the environment. Five, teens are more aware of the negative effects of tobacco on their bodies. In spite of all the information available to young people, teenagers remain the most likely group to start smoking. For Large Mamaroneck Community News, I'm Glenna Gray. The village of Mamaroneck is searching for a new village manager. Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News reporter Suzanne Rothberg has the report. The village of Mamaroneck is searching for a new village manager. Former village manager Michael Blau resigned last month and has already started his new position as village manager of Briarcliff Manor. An eight-member committee has been formed to find a new Mamaroneck village manager. Frank Holross, a former Rice City manager, has been retained by the village to assist clerk treasurer Leonard Verastro, who has been appointed acting village manager. Mr. Colross will be paid $650 a day for three days a week.
Village of Ameranek Mayor Deborah Chapin was quoted in the Journal News saying, there are so many projects going on, we felt that it was imperative that we have additional professional manager assisting the village. The new eight-member committee is hoping to interview candidates this winter and by January narrow down the search to three or four candidates. For Larchmont Ameranek Community News, I'm Suzanne Rothberg. The Village of Mamaroneck po Police and Fire Departments are having a charity basketball game to benefit the World Trade Center victims. Here with all the details is Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News reporter Amy Schachtel. The Village of Mamaroneck Police and Fire Departments will hold a benefit basketball game this Friday, October 26, in the Palmer Avenue gym at Mamaroneck High School at 7 p.m. This fundraiser will benefit the Twin Towers Fund. You don't have to attend the event to donate money. You can send in a check to the Police and Fire Fund, P.O. Box 774, Mamaroneck, New York, 10543. Again, the Village of Mamaroneck Police Department versus the Fire Department in a basketball game to raise funds for the Twin Towers Fund. The game will take place this Friday, October 26th in the Palmer Avenue Gym at Mamaroneck High School at 7 p.m. For Larchmont Mamarna Community News, I'm Amy Schachtel. I'll be there and I hope to see you there too. The election campaign in Mamarna Village for two positions on the Board of Trustees is heating up. The elections will be held on November 6. Mayor Deborah Chapin and incumbent trustee Thomas Murphy are running on the Democratic ticket. Phil Trifletti, the Republican candidate for mayor, and Republican William Pronessa opposed them. At a roundtable discussion with the editorial board of the Journal News, the two most prominent issues were the construction of a new firehouse and the cleanup of the harbor. The Republicans argue that the Democrats, who have all five seats on the village board, kept the public uninformed about important decisions regarding the new firehouse and did not do enough to clean up the harbor. The incumbent Democrats say they're handling the issues in an even-handed, professional fashion. Phil Trifletti said during the discussion, quote, there hasn't been any clear communication on the firehouse. That's why there's so much confusion. The mayor talks about open government. I'm sorry, that's not the case, end of quote. Mayor Chapin responded by saying, quote, all we're trying to do with the firehouse is plan professionally for it. The hallmark of my administration is openness. Clearly the public will be involved and clearly the fire department will be involved, end of quote. And regarding the cleanup of the harbor and the closing of the beach for the last two years, Republican candidate for the position of trustee, William Panessa, said, quote, as a resident of Mimernick, I'm not getting a bang for my buck, end of quote. Thomas Murphy, the incumbent Democratic candidate, said, quote, the infrastructure has been neglected for years. This is the first time in years that really addressed the problem. It's a complicated problem that requires a comprehensive solution." End of quote. A special probation program that requires teens to be supervised is changing the age requirements from 16 to 18 years old. Here with more is Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News reporter Suzanne Rothberg. Westchester, Rockland, and Putnam counties are asking that the date for the new teen law be delayed because compliance to the law is expected to be costly. The new law, expected to be enacted November 1st, is supposed to give control over teens. It raises concerns about whether it is such a good idea after all. The legislation raises the special probation program's cutoff age from 16 to 18. Persons in need of supervision allows families to seek services, including social services, court intervention, and a probation officer to rein in teens who have behavioral problems. These teens stay out all night, drop out of school, abuse alcohol or drugs, or have other troubles. Many county and state officials think the intent of helping more children could backfire by a flooding of an already strained system. Our feeling is that you're really holding out false hope to parents, said Nancy Travers, Westchester Deputy Commissioner for Children and Family Services. For parents with troubled teens, it leaves them in limbo, not knowing where to turn for help. The new program PINS, an acronym standing for Persons in Need of Supervision program, is designed to help troubled teens cope with the law and today's society. 
Under the PINS program, parents, schools, and police departments can seek assistance for children by contacting probation departments. These departments make referrals to a wide array of services, such as community agencies, family courts, mental health services, a substance abuse counseling, or other help. Funding for the program may be difficult because it could mean paying higher taxes and may not prove to be that effective. Those who fought for the PINS bill last year may have been lobbying for state funding for it, and the measure is long overdue. If you are interested in more information on the PINS program, please contact your state legislator. For Large Mama Maranac Community News, I'm Suzanne Rothberg. And we'd like to share with you a letter written by the son of one of our reporters, Amy Schachtel, to President Bush recently. Dear President Bush, think of a strategy or plan that's unique that no one has tried before, not just to help you or the people, but also to save the tight seal of America. I am 10 years old and in the fifth grade at Central School in Larchmont, New York. I give you good luck and good wishes, and I hope I will grow in a peaceful world. Jake Fixell. And that's it for this week's edition of Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News. If you want to see the this news show again, you can. It's on every weekday night at 7 p.m. We record one show each week, and it's replayed on this channel, LMC TV Channel 71. Or if you want to request it, to request to see it, you can. Call LMC TV after 4 in the afternoon during the week at 698-6808 and ask to see the news show. They'll try to put it on at a time that's convenient for you. And this reminder, this news program is an all-volunteer effort, and we could use a few more volunteers, either behind the scenes or as a reporter. Or maybe you'd like to shoot video. Whatever the case, we need you. In short, if you want to volunteer to help us put this program on, we have something for you to do. Stop by some Thursday night in the LMC TV studios and see how we do what we do. The LMC TV studios are in the Mimanac High School, the Palmer Avenue side, just up the stairs across from the landmark Walters Hot Dog Stand. We get things started around 7 p.m. and we'd love to see you. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions or some video of an event you'd like us to put on this new show, bring it to the studio or write to us at Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News in care of LMC TV, 1 Library Lane, Mamaroneck, New York, 10543. Thanks again for watching Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News. I'm Sven Ullmer. And I'm Maura Carlin. See you next week. Okay, okay now we can... at Harbor Island is still in question. County Chairman George Latimer is told to fire former secretary. Former Democratic Congressman Richard Ottinger is supporting local GOP. The Manic Village Board extends moratorium on cellular antennas. And a resident in the village of Mamaroneck donates a large sum of money to the GOP and have the Democrats crying foul. Those stories and more coming up right here on this edition of Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News. Welcome to the Larchmont Mamana Community News Show for the first week of November 2001. I'm Sven Ulmer. And I'm Maura Carlin. Our top story. The legal battles continue over the fate of the Larchmont Manor Inn. The inn's owners plan to appeal the ruling of the Village Board of Appeals that they cannot build two homes on the site of the inn. 
Under current zoning regulations, the lot size justifies only one home. According to the Journal News, the attorney for the in zoners was surprised by the decision, since 98% of the residents approved, and the plan represented a scale back from an earlier plan to build three homes on the site. Earlier proposals to convert the hotel into condos or a bed and breakfast were scrapped after facing community opposition. The inn currently is used for senior housing, and the Larchmont Historical Society hopes to keep it that way. The society is trying to preserve the building, which was built in 1893 and was once used as a summer resort, and they're looking for a buyer to maintain its current use. The village board elections in Mamernik are really heating up with an unexpected endorsement. Richard Ottinger, a former congressman from Mamernik who served for 16 years in Washington for the Democrats, is not endorsing the candidates of the Democrats, village mayor Deborah Chapin and trustee Thomas Murphy. Instead, Ottinger sent a letter to village residents supporting Republican candidate Philip Trifoletti and William Panessa. Ottinger is upset about the handling of the tennis facility in Harbor Island Park by the all-democratic village board. In his view, the village board did not involve residents when the board decided to replace the former tennis bubbles with a $1.9 million sports complex. The board's decision has resulted in a number of lawsuits against the village and is leaving residents who used to play tennis in the bubbles during the winter without those tennis bubbles for a second season. Ottinger, who played tennis during the winter at Harbor Island, says in the letter that Philip Trifoletti and William Pernessa have made a commitment not to build until the public has been heard and its comments are included in a master plan for Harbor Island Park. The elections in the village for mayor and one trustee position are scheduled for November 6. Remember IKEA? Remember that law enacted by the town of Mamaroneck requiring developers of certain large-scale projects on its borders to get Mamaroneck approval first? Well, a New York State Supreme Court justice bounced the law, saying it violated the state environmental impact law because the town failed to consider the environmental impact of the law on Mamaroneck's neighboring communities. New Rochelle and Ikea sued the town last year, claiming the law was unconstitutional. And although the Ikea project is gone, according to the Journal News, New Rochelle Mayor uh, Tim Idoni believes the law has had a chilling effect on development in the area and would likely sue again if Mamaroneck enacted another law. Meanwhile, Mamaroneck officials are meeting to consider their options, which include an appeal or reenactment of the law after a broader environmental review. The chairman of the Westchester County Legislature, Democrat George Latimer, has been told by the Rules Committee of the Council to immediately terminate his former secretary, Lynn Crichton. Eighteen months ago, Latimer had moved Crichton to a temporary assignment in an office across the street of the county building because she was not able to get along with other people. Initially, the new assignment was to last for three months, but Latimer extended the temporary assignment five times. A spokesman for Latimer said that Crichton would not be fired before November 23rd when a current five-week extension of the temporary assignment expires unless the full legislature asks uh, Latimer to do so. The Democratic and Republican leaders who sit on the three-person rules committee of the legislature voted in favor of the resolution to advise Latimer to immediately terminate the temporary assignment. The third legislator on the Rules Committee was absent when the vote was taken. Now it's up to the full legislature to make the final decision. A small memorial park in Larchmont has been rededicated. With more, here's Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News reporter Amy Schachtel. Larchmont police officer Arthur DeMatt died in 1976. He was killed while on duty patrolling the village of Larchmont. October 13th marked the 25th anniversary of his death and the village of Larchmont rededicated Memorial Park off Palmer Avenue and Soundview Drive to DeMatt Park. The park is owned and maintained by the Larchmont Police Benevolent Association. Officer DeMatt had the unique distinction of being the only police officer in the history of Larchmont to be killed in the line of duty. The new DeMatt Park has recently undergone a bit of a facelift with a new flagpole, fence, bushes, and flowers. For Larchmont Mamarina Community News, I'm Amy Schachtel. The tentative budget for the town of Mamarnik for the year 2002 has just been released by town administrator Steve Altieri. 
the $21.3 million budget calls for a 3.6% rise of the property tax rate. Among the additional spending compared to last year are an increase for higher salaries and benefits for town employees and hikes in insurance costs. Under the tentative budget, the proposed tax rate would be $178.75 per $1,000 of a home's assessed value. This translates into an increase of $5.75 per $1,000 for residents of Larchman and Mamanic Village. A public hearing is scheduled for the December 5 at the town center. Town council, the town council will discuss the budget on November 14th, and the budget is scheduled to be adopted at the town board meeting on December 19th. The Democrats in the village of Mamanic are crying foul. Largemont Mamarne community news reporter Suzanne Rothberg tells us why. A Mamaronic resident who recently lost two lawsuits to uh, the Democrat-controlled village has contributed the largest amount ever to the village's Republican Party. The 25,000 donation by real estate re owner Melvin Kaufman and 1,000 given by his wife Elizabeth Atwood constitute all the listed contributions the GOP received this year, according to the latest disclosure statements filed with the County Board of Elections. The contribution is nearly double the 13,295 village Democrats raised this year and has prompted them to file complaints with the Board of Elections that the donation exceeds state limits. The Democrats are also raising questions about the influence Kaufman could hold on Republicans Philip Trefletti and William Panessa if they're elected. A spokesman for the State Board of Elections said the Republicans appear not to have violated any campaign laws and the village's Republican chairman says the GOP candidates wouldn't be able to resolve Kaufman's lawsuit even if they won. They would still be a minority on the five-member board of trustees. With the election just two weeks away, Trifletti is running against Democratic Mayor Deborah Chapin November 6th and Panessa is trying to unseat Democrat Thomas Murphy, who was appointed trustee this past summer. Kaufman, who donated the money, was unavailable for comment, but Mamaronek Republican Chairman Joseph Angeletta said Kaufman is angry at Chapin and wants a change in village leadership. For Largemont Mamaronek Community News, I'm Suzanne Rothberg. The cellular antenna moratorium has been extended in the village of Mamaronek. Here with the details is Larchmont Mamarina Community News reporter Amy Schachtel. Citing the frustration residents at the Hawthorne Gardens had when they tried to stop a cellular antenna from being constructed on the roof of their cooperative apartment building on Stewart Avenue. The Mamaronek Village Board of Trustees are planning to extend the nine-month ban on the construction of new cellular antennas until mid-December. The 1998 law clearly allowed cellular antennas in residential districts. The cellular antenna moratorium can't stop additions or modifications to the existing cell facilities. The Mamaronek Village Board of Trustees are still planning to draft a telecommunications law for Mamaronek. Mayor Chapin was quoted in the Journal News as saying, officials have been busy with other projects and needed more time to draft the law. For Larchmont Mamarina Community News, I'm Amy Schachtel. Walter's hot dogs get a national boost this past week. Larchmont Mamarina Community News reporter Suzanne Rothbeck has the story. It's been called Mamarinek's landmark for years. The misleading facade that looks like an oriental takeout chain that's really a hot dog stand. It's none other than Walter's Hot Dog Stand. Their hot dogs were recently voted best in the nation in the October issue of Gourmet Magazine. The 82-year-old family-owned roadside hot dog stand was also voted the best hot dog in the 2001 Great American Hot Dog Tour. And it is proud of this honor. Co-owner Gene Warrington said, quote, we could not be happier to see this happen to a little stand in town that not too many people know about. The history of Walters goes way back to 1919 when Warrington's father, Walter, decided to open up a different roadside stand. He ended up opening a little stand on Boston Post Road and developed a unique recipe for a hot dog that would not curl or burn split and cooked on the grill. In 1928, the stand moved to its current location, Palmer Avenue. Warrington asked a friend to design the building. The result was a pagoda-style building with a copper roof adorned with two carps, which are believed to be symbols of prosperity. 
today, but Merrick's popular hangout continues to be the top dog. Since 1919, four generations of the Warrington family have been involved in the business and still follow Walter's idea of, follow, of providing quality products and services to their customers. For Larchmont Maranac Community News, I'm Suzanne Rothberg, just right up the stairs from Walter's Hot Dogs. And a walkathon is going to take place in our area. Here with the details is Mamaronek, is Larchmont Mamaronek Community News reporter Christina Bolger. If you want to do something to make a difference in the lives of local families that were affected by the tragic attack on September 11th, grab a pen and paper and write down this information so you can plan your schedule accordingly. The date is November 24th. The place is Mamaronek High School on Boston Post Road. And the time is 1 p.m. A recently formed local organization, FIND, Friends Indeed, has orchestrated a mission of helping and healing. FIND is dedicated to raising funds to provide financial assistance for Larchmont and Mamernick families who have lost an immediate family member in the World Trade Center attacks. FIND has planned a 2.5 mile walk for all ages and a kids one mile mini walk. The walk begins at 1 p.m. from Mamernick High School. Pre-registration will be held on Saturday, November 3rd, November 10th, and November 17th between 9 a.m. and 12 noon at the Sound Federal Savings on Mamernick Avenue and Citibank on Palmer Avenue in Larchmont. You can also register at the Village of Mamernick Turkey Trot at Harbor Island on Sunday, November 18th between 8.30 and 11 a.m. Or you can register on walk day between 10 and 12. The registration fee is $10 per individual or a family fee of $35. Event day registration is $15 per individual and $40 per family. For more information, check out their website at www.findlmc.org. For Larchmont Mamernick Community News, I'm Christina Bolger. And that's it for this week's edition of Larchmont Mamernick Community News. If you want to see this news show again, you can. It's on every weekday night at 7 p.m. We record one show each week, and it's replayed on this channel, LMC TV, channel 71. Or if you want to request to see it, you can call LMC TV after 4 in the afternoon during the week at 698-6808 and ask to see the news show. They'll try to put it on at a time that's convenient for you. And this reminder, this news program is an all-volunteer effort. We could use a few more volunteers, either behind the scenes or as a reporter. Or maybe you'd like to shoot video. Whatever the case, we need you. In short, if you want to volunteer to help us put this program on, we've got something for you to do. Stop by some Thursday night in the LMC TV studios and see how we do what we do. The LMC TV studios are in the Mamanic High School. The Palmer Avenue side, just up the stairs, across from the landmark Walters Hot Dog Stand. We get things started around 7 p.m., and we would love to see you. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions or some video of an event that you'd like us to put on this new show, bring it to the studio or write to us at Larchmont Mamaronek Community News in care of LMC TV, 1 Library Lane, Mamaronek, New York, 10543. Thanks again for watching Larchmont Mamerna Community News. I'm Sven Urme. And I'm Maura Carlin. We'll see you next week. Mamaronek Town is putting the finishing touches on its budget. We'll have an update. The Manic Village Mayor Deborah Chapin has questions about the large GOP donation. The spray ground is back in the news, but will it really be built? The Manic Village Police arrest two employees at the Quick Lube to charge car theft. And David's Island may be about to be sold, and you'll never guess who the buyer could be. Those stories and more coming up right here on this edition of Larchmont Mamaronek Community News.
Hello and welcome to the Large Mermana Community News Show for the second week of November 2001. I'm Sven Ulmer. And I'm Alicia Myro. Our top story. Tenants of the regatta condominiums in the Marinic Village have filed a $7.5 million lawsuit against the architect of the building, the company that supervised construction, and Mamaroneck Village, citing that the condos were poorly built. The condo association claims that there are cracks, leaks, and parking spaces are too narrow, pointing out that the village was negligent in allowing the 114 apartment building to be completed with structural defects five years ago. Each party in the lawsuit is being sued for $2.5 million in damages. Mayor Chapin's concern is that the taxpayers have no further liability. The Condo Association, the Mamaroneck Affordable Condominium Corporation, and the builder, Brooklyn-based Corigliano Gamut, have agreed to hire an independent company to go into the regatta and determine what needs to be repaired. Joshua Grauer, the attorney for the Condo Association, says that if the village and the other parties agree to join the effort, the Condo Association would not pursue the lawsuit. The tentative budget for the town for 2002 was released a couple of weeks ago by town administrator Steve Altieri. The $21.3 million budget calls for a 3.6% rise of the property tax rate. Town Supervisor Valerie Moore O'Keefe said that the town will see higher insurance costs in the coming year. New York State may also reduce its contribution to the workers' pension funds in 2003. O'Keefe told the Journal News that she wants the town to continue to provide the same level of service and still reduce the proposed tax rate increase of 3.6%. The Town Council will discuss the budget on November 14th. A public hearing is scheduled for December 5th at the Town Center. The budget is scheduled to be adopted at the Town Board meeting on December 19th. Several issues arose at the recent debates for mayor and trustee in Mamaroneck Village. There were discussions about where money should be spent and where money had been cut. Harbor Island was at the forefront with differing points of view regarding a border collie, dog walking, a water playground, and field irrigation. Campaign contributions also came up and Mayor Chapin said that the village Republicans should return a $25,000 donation from a resident who recently sued the village. The resident lost their $4 million lawsuit, but Mayor Chapin seemed steadfast in her view that the money should be returned. Mayoral candidate Phil Trifoletti said the money was donated months before he became a candidate and that money would not change his mind or his message. For the latest in election night coverage, be sure to stay tuned on LMC TV on Tuesday, November 6th. The chairman of the Westchester County Legislature, Democrat George Latimer, finally had to fire his former secretary after the Westchester County Board of Legislators confirmed a decision by the Rules Committee of the Council to immediately terminate the former secretary, Lynn Crichton. Eighteen months ago, Latimer had moved Crichton to a temporary assignment in an office across the street of the county building because of complaints that she was not able to get along with other people. Initially, the new assignment was to last for three months, but Latimer extended the temporary assignment five times. The Democratic and Republican leaders, who each sit on the three-person rules committee of the legislature, voted in favor of the resolution to advise Latimer to immediately terminate the temporary assignment. Latimer did not accept that decision as final, but agreed that he would fire Creighton immediately in case the legislature would tell him to do so. And last week, the legislature did so by short roll call procedure. Only the chairman of the legislature and the majority and minority leaders voted. Majority leader Tom Abinanti, a Democrat, and Paul Nodo, the Republican minority leader, voted in favor of terminating Creighton's employment. Latimer voted against it. And under the short roll call procedure, legislators opposed to the decision can register their negative votes, and three Democrats did so. Creighton has hired a civil rights lawyer to represent her in her fight against the county. Well, residents in our area are quite upset about the noise of jets flying over their heads. Here with more is Larchmont Mamarinic Community News reporter Glenna Gray. The Federal Aviation Administration is considering routing flights over a single community as opposed to spreading them out among several communities. As part of the airspace redesign efforts in order to reduce the flight delays, improve airport capacity management, and promote the overall efficiency of the greater New York aviation system. 
three local residents, Eric Blanc, Michael Alfieri, and Diana Hurd, are again attempting to re-energize a grassroots campaign to keep the FAA mindful of community concerns. A letter writing campaign has begun. Ms. Hurd has drafted a letter in hopes of getting 2,000 signatures by mid-November. For Large Mariner Community News, I'm Glenna Gray. Looking for a job? Well, the Director of Employment of Large Mariner Incorporated, Leslie Giselle, may be able to help. For more, he's Large Mariner Community News reporter Amy Chattel, who has an interview. Well, one of the things I like to tell people is that we are not-for-profit. So I think that takes the onus off of us just trying to match anybody with any type of job. Um, we do not take money from the businesses nor the applicants. We work with local residents in the Larch Mountain and Marinette community, and we try to pair them with jobs within the community as well. But one of the things I think that makes us very special is that we're very hands-on. We really tailor what we do um, individually for each applicant that comes through the door. And, and where do the applicants, I mean, where do they know to find you? Uh, obviously, this will be a very important way that you'll reach almost 11,000 viewers. Well, absolutely. It's funny. One of the ways that we tend to get a lot of our viewers is from the LMC TV bulletin board, the loop that goes around. Very so, good. <laughs> let's see. So that's why I'm here. Um, the, we do um, a lot of, a lot of it is referrals. A lot of, you know, we've been around for two and a half years now. So a lot of people are coming because a friend used us and had a great experience or a that's cousin. Great. So. Uh, Leslie, one of the things that I find very unique and I, I respect a lot about what you're doing is that you're, you're really helping the person who wants to get a job uh, and may not have been in the job market for quite a while, let's say a single mom or someone who's over 65. Uh, you mentioned before what I thought was very good, that you take people in an age range, would From you tell us? 18 to 80. 18 to 80. No, you know, anyone who's between those ages can come in and they'll, they'll be interviewed, they'll fill an application, we'll assess their skills. And again, whatever their issue might be with getting a job, we'll work on them one-on-one, -on -one, whether they need a resume, help have, you know, having a resume written, or maybe they've never been on an interview, an interview before and need to do some mock interviewing. Some people come to us because they don't even know what to dress. You know, we'll work with them on any type of issue that they might have to get them ready. Basically, what we like to say is we don't let them out the door until they're ready to go. No, I mean, that's, again, that's also unique in that you're not a typical employment agency at all. You're an organization to help the people of Mamaroneck. Um, and specifically um, you were telling me before how you help people and how they come to you is when their needs are a little uh, not just someone looking for a job no we see mostly it's interesting people always ask me what you know who do we who do we help yes and it really does run the gamut we see a lot of single parents who come who might be their first time working for whatever reason that they've had um, and we'll come and again we'll work with them one-on-one -on, -one on all different issues that they might have whether they need to have child care now for their children so they can go out and work some of the people that come to us might have housing issues because they're in a new you know new situation we'll work with them we'll get them to the appropriate organizations we see a lot of senior citizens who need to supplement their income they come to us with wonderful skills but a lot of them lack the computer experience that's needed now and we do a um, <clears throat> excuse me a scholarship program with the continuing education um, center here at Mamaroneck High School where we offer scholarships to those who are working with Elm to get jobs so they can take computer classes here Let's free of charge. Th that's great. Would you please give your address and phone number for those interested in contacting you? Sure. We're located at the CAP Center, which is the Community Action Program in Mamaroneck, and that's at 134 Center Avenue. And our phone number is 698-0221, and we have drop-in office hours on Monday mornings and Thursday mornings. Uh. Well, the treasurer of FIND, Friends Indeed, Amy Brelia, came to our studios to talk about a charity walk to help victims' families of the September 11th tragedies. For more details, let's go to Larchmont Mamarina Community News reporter Christina Bolger with an interview. Yes, this organization, FIND, which actually stands for Friends Indeed, uh, it's a grassroots organization, if I may say, it's cropped out of, uh, it's formed from local volunteers in the organization. Okay. There is actually, if I may say, uh, 
two other people, one main person who's very instrumental and who has actually formed the organization, and that's Bob Meglio. And, and put this organization to raise money for uh, families that have been affected by Yes. What has happened is that uh, Bob Meglio felt very strongly about uh, trying to help these people. There are approximately um, seven to eight families in the large Mama Maranek uh, area who have experienced the loss of a spouse. That and um, Yes, yes. And um, he felt so strongly about it, he reached out to the community and wanted to form an organization to raise money to help these families. Now, is the money going to be funneled through the Red Cross or, or is it through your organization and will go directly to these families? No, what's actually going to happen is that the money is going directly to these families. We're going to raise this money and it's going directly to these families. What, what percentage of the money raised will go to them? Well, we anticipate, uh, we did some calculations some time ago, and uh, we anticipate 90 to 95 percent of the dollars raised That's to great. be distributed to the families. And the, the balance will go to the t-shirts? and. Yes, what we're having is, um, we're actually having a walk. Right. And this walk is on November 24th. At what time? And it's at 1 o'clock, mm -hmm. and it starts at the Mamaronek High School. Okay. And the walk is to raise money to help these families. Now, where, where in, uh, at Mamaronek High School will the walk start? Is it going to be near Walter's Hot Dog Stand, or is it going to be in the parking lot on Boston Post Road? That's a good question, okay. because I always think of, of Mamaronek High School as being Walter's, right? right the Hot right, Dog Stand. Right. And it's actually going to be at the on Boston Post Road. Okay. And the walk... Um, for there's a walk for children if you'd like to do the shorter walk of one mile other than that if you'd like to do the longer walk it's 2.5 miles it'll extend to Larchmont I believe it's the post office and then coming back on Boston Post Road to Harbor Island and back to the high school itself okay now where can people register okay, register on the day or, or can they do it before pre-register yes there's a couple of places that they can actually register in a few days that they can register in okay great tell uh, us about that okay um, this Saturday at Sound Federal Savings and Loan on the Maranek Avenue there'll be a table set up within the bank okay. and we will be accepting registrations for the walk and as well as at Citibank in on Palmer Avenue in Larchmont, Larchmont. yes okay. and that's this Saturday as well as the following Saturday and then the following Saturday. I've forgotten the, the dates on that. The, it's the 10th and the 17th. So basically every Saturday up until the, the date of the race, people can register at Sound Federal Savings in Mamaroneck, yes. um, Citibank at Palmer Avenue in Larchmont, and also, uh, I understand, at the Turkey Trot. Yes. The village of Mamaroneck on, on Sunday trot. the 18th will be basically the last day they can pre-register. And what is the fee for pre-registration? I believe the fee, if I remember correctly, is $10 for an individual. Correct. And for a family, there's a limitation. Mm -hmm. And if I remember correctly, the number is $35. Pre correct. For pre-registration. Yes, see, I have all the paperwork in front of me. Yes, <laughs> it is. You're correct. It's thirty-five dollars, and the day of registration will be uh, fifteen for an individual, and right. for family is forty. Yes, that's right. That's right. Okay. So basically, you know, we're trying to give. We want families to become involved, mm -hmm. especially since it is on Saturday after Thanksgiving. It's a good day. It's a good way to spend some family time, as mm -hmm. well as to. Remember what's happening, especially just to reinforce everything that's incur occurring mm -hmm. in our world today and, and to bring people together mm -hmm. uh, to support the community. Members on the town council face no, no serious opposition in the elections on November 6. Town Supervisor Valerie Moore O'Keefe, who is the only Republican on the five-member board, is opposed by Right to Life candidate Dolores M. Agents. Two more council members are up for election, Ernest Odiana and Nancy Seligson face no opponent. Town Justice Dolores Battaglia is also unopposed. O'Keefe, an attorney, is seeking her second term as supervisor, and the most prominent issue during her first term was the fight against the proposed location of the furniture store IKEA on the New Rochelle-Mamarnak border. High on her agenda for the next term is budget control. O'Keefe told the Journal News, quote, we want to be conservative in budgeting, end of quote. Town council members receive $6,000 per year. The supervisors paid $25,000.
And to recap the lineup for elections in Mimanic Village, the candidates of the Democrats are Village Mayor Deborah Chapin and Trustee Thomas Murphy, and they were opposed by Republican candidate for Mayor Philip Trifoletti and William Pornessa, who runs for the position of trustee. November 6 is election day, and be sure to watch election night coverage right here on LMC TV. Well, the Harbor Islands Parade Ground might finally become a reality. Here with the report is Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News reporter Christina Bolger. The Mamaroneck Village Board Trustees approved the recommendation by the Coastal Zone Management Commission regarding the best location for the Harbor Islands Parade Ground. The Village's Parks and Recreation Commission also approved the same site. The spray ground, when constructed, will be a big wall with different types of spray nozzles on it that will spray water. The location the two commissions recommended was on the beach near the cannon, not next to the pavilion, as originally suggested. The spray ground has not been without its critics. A few months back on this new show, we featured an interview with the members of the Concerned Citizens for Harbor Island. The group believed that any new construction at Harbor Island should wait until a master plan could be completed. Trustee Francis P. McConnell was quoted in the Journal News saying, the project has been on the agenda since the late 1990s, and the current board's job was merely to see it through. Mayor Chapin was quoted saying she hopes the project will be finished by summer. Westchester County has offered to pay for half of the spray grounds construction through a community development block grant. The offer is only good until February 28, 2002. The total cost of the new spray ground is $150,000. For Larchmont Memorandum Community News, I'm Christina Bolger. Two employees at the Quick Lube here in the village of Mamanek were arrested and charged with three counts of car theft. Largement Mamanek community news reporter Amy Schachtel has more. Ishmael de Leon, 23 of Yonkers, and Jose Paban, 19 of Mount Vernon, were charged this past week with fourth degree criminal possession of stolen property, a felony. The two men are employees at the Expressway Loop Center at 1001 Mamaroneck Avenue. The two men were apprehended while leaving the Loop Center in one of the stolen cars, a Toyota Corolla. In search near De Leon's home, the police found another vehicle. It is possible that the men were stealing the duplicate keys that the owners had on their keychains. A third car was recovered on the Bronx River Road in Yonkers. All three cars were still in good condition. De Leon and Pabone are being held in the Westchester County Jail in Valhalla pending trial. The Mamaroneck Town and Village Police are working jointly on the case and have stated that the Expressway Lube Center has not been implicated in the thefts. For Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News, I'm Amy Schachtel. Well, David's Island is about to be sold again. Here with the details is Larchmont Mamaroneck Community News reporter Suzanne Rothberg. David's Island in New Rochelle, Westchester's best kept secret, has been bought out by Westchester County for $6.5 million. This breakthrough ends years of fights for the county and city environmentalists and developers on what to do with David's Island. The 78-acre island was a former military post and has been empty for years. Westchester County has not only agreed to buy the property, but has also arranged to pay for the cleanup and demolishing of deteriorating buildings. County Executive Andy Spano said, quote, we all agree that it should be a park, end quote. He promised a plan would be developed with participation from the residents, environmental groups, and municipalities. The island itself has a diverse history. It has been a tug of war almost since the federal government sold it to the city in 1967. Con Edison had plans to build a nuclear power plant there in the late 1960s and early 70s. In the 1980s, Xanadu Property Association wanted to build condominium towers, and in the 1990s, Donald Trump considered it for condos and mansions. In the last year or so, the city of New Rochelle had plans to build a park on the site, but still agreed to set aside any land for development that would generate taxes for the city. New Rochelle Mayor Tim Idoni said he finally decided that it would help the city more to have a park soon than wait for years to get some taxable development on the island. John Atkin, president of the organization Save the Sound, said, quote, Quote, it's great news in this region where everything is urbanized, end quote. This new development on David's Island could be the answer to revitalizing New Rochelle. For Largemont Mamaroneck Community News, I'm Suzanne Rothberg. Largemont Mamaroneck Community News reporter Glenna Gray tells us that Mamaroneck Town still has a glimmer of hope when it comes to their border rule legislation. Glenna? 
A law passed by the town council last year to protect its borders from the IKEA project has been struck down by the state Supreme Court. Attorney Foyer still believes the town has the right to require town-issued permits from developers who wish to go ahead with projects larger than 10 acres that would touch Mamanic borders. The town may enact the law again after a broader environmental review is conducted in compliance with Judge Nikolai's ruling. The law was challenged by Nourishell and IKEA as being unconstitutional and in violation of the State Environmental Quality Review Act. Judge Nikolai ruled that Mamaronek had failed to consider the environmental impact the law might have on its neighbors. Nourishell attorney Michael Zarin believes it is better to deal with the substantive impacts of the project in a meaningful manner outside the political limelight. For Larchmont Mamaronek Community News, I'm Glenna Gray. And that's it for this week's edition of Larchmont Mamaronek Community News. If you want to see this news show again, you can. It's on every weekday night at 7 p.m. We record one show each week, and it is replayed on this channel, LMC TV Channel 71. Or if you want to request to see it, you can call LMC TV after 4 in the afternoon during the week at 698-6808 and ask to see the new show. They'll try to put it on at a time that's convenient for you to watch. And this reminder, this news program is an all-volunteer effort and we could use a few more volunteers either behind the scenes or as a reporter. Or maybe you'd like to shoot video. Whatever the case, we need you. In short, if you want to volunteer to help us put this program on, we have something for you to do. Stop by some Thursday night in the LMC TV studios and see how we do what we do. The LMC TV studios are in the Mimernick High School, the Palmer Avenue side, just up the stairs, across from the landmark Walters Hot Dog Stand. We get things started around 7 p.m., and we would love to see you. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions, or some video of an event that you would like us to put on this new show, bring it to the studio or write to us at Larchmont Mimernick Community News in care of LMC TV, 1 Library Lane, Mimernick, New York, 10543. Thanks again for watching Largemont Memorial Community News. I'm Sven Rimmer. And I'm Alicia Myra. We'll see you next week.